I'll be showing 10 new features in Microsoft Teams. This includes the much requested ability to create tasks on Teams messages, inclusive and accessible features, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is the top requested task integration from Teams messages and posts. This allows you to easily gather messages and turn them into tasks for your personal list or for Planner. I'm here in Teams. Now, first off, I'm gonna go over here to the three dot menu and add the tasks app. So you can search for tasks by planner. Right here, I have it, I'm gonna click it. By default, everyone has the personal tasks right here. So tasks, important, planned, assigned to me. I've also added planner in this team. So right here, I click on quarterly planning and I have a set of tasks here as well. I could switch to the board or the chart or the schedule. This is just adding planner. And I'll also show that I've added it right here in my team. I added that by just going to the plus menu and adding this plan right at the top. And that was set up already. So I have my big important TPS report status meeting. And I said, hey, I'm gonna be on point to gather feedback for this. So I'm gonna hover here, click the three dot menu, go down to more actions. And you're gonna see this new choice for create task. Click that. This pops up the task dialog. It pulls in all the status from that message. I can give it a title. I'll set it to high priority. I'm gonna set the due date. We'll make that August 20th. And where do I wanna create it? Well, I'm gonna create it in my personal tasks. I could also create it in quarterly planning, but this one is for me. So I will now just go and hit add task. Now let's switch over to tasks here on the left app bar. And under my tasks, you'll see TPS report planning task. I made it important. So it also shows up right here, but now I can track that, I can open it and edit it and everything else. The other nice thing is people can add them right into the product team plan. So let's go back to the team. Now I also wanna assign a task to Alex. He has a design task and I want him to add it into our plan. And that's the same plan I've already created in this team. Hover on the message, go to the three dot menu, go down to more actions and choose create task. This dialog pops up again. This time I'm gonna drop create in down, expand product team and choose quarterly planning. Now I'm gonna give it a title, our TPS report design jam, priority medium. I'm gonna change the bucket here to designs. I set these buckets up earlier in my plan and we'll make the due date the 17th and I can assign it. So let's assign this to Alex. And here's Alex Wilbur. Now I'm gonna post a reply about this task into the channel as well. Click add task. So you'll see it also posts this message right into the team channel. So Alex can see this, he can view the details, but I'm gonna go over here on the left app bar, click there. I'm gonna go down to shared plans and go to the quarterly planning. Now you'll see the TPS report design jam task is right here, but also if I go to the board in my planner, you'll see this new TPS report design jam. So that's the task that I added directly from the message in Teams. So it's really nice to be able to have all your personal tasks as well as your team tasks right in one place. A final note on tasks, you can also go into your chat and do the three dot menu and add tasks directly from your chat messages as well. The second new feature is chat bubbles in Teams meetings. Now let's say I'm presenting here and I'm really in my presentation about Saturn and the chat is happening. It'd be nice if I could get a little chat bubble to let me know in case I miss something. So right here, I'm talking about Saturn and I've gone on to the next slide and all of a sudden I get this message. This pops up, Ella, oh, can you explain a bit more about the rings of Saturn? So I see that chat bubble. Okay, maybe I'm gonna go back here and talk about Saturn. Now what's nice is those chat bubbles can pop up for everyone who's in the meeting. And so if you're paying attention to a presentation and these important chat bubbles are popping up, it's a great cue that you might wanna go engage in the chat or answer a question. Now you can also turn these off. So if I go up here to the three dot menu, I can say don't show chat bubbles, turn that off. And now all the chat will just show up like it normally does right here in that meeting chat. The third new feature is the ability to pin a chat message. I'm gonna to go to chat right here and I'm gonna go into a chat that I've been having. And this is with my TPS report besties. Now there's a long string of chat here and there's a specific message here, this TPS report next generation, I wanna pin this. So hover and go to the three dot menu and choose pin. You'll note that it pins it right across the top here. So let's say I'm scroll down farther in the chat, but I wanna be able to pull that one message up really quickly. Now I just click here 
and it jumps me right back to the chat that has that TPS report image in it. Anytime you pin a message in a chat, like this group chat, everyone else will see it as well. Just a note, you can only pin one message at a time, so if I want to go here and pin a different one, I hit the three dot menu, choose pin. I'll replace the current message, yep, I'll change it. So now I've got a different message pinned up at the top right here. And to unpin your chat message, just go to the three dot menu in the upper right, drop that down and choose unpin. Okay. The fourth new feature is updates to emojis and additions. So if I reply to a message here, and this also works in chat, and I go click on the little emoji icon, you're gonna see a bunch of new additions in here. Anything that has a dot next to it, I can right click and choose a different skin tone, some more inclusive choices, lots of additional updates for people. And again, I can right click on any of these. And we have animals and food and all sorts of great options that have been added. So you have a bit more flexibility when adding emojis into teams. Maybe I wanna add a nice little part of a moon. The fifth new feature is an improvement to how files open in Teams and the defaults you can set. I'm gonna to go to chat here, and I have a solar system PowerPoint deck. Now by default, if I go here, you're gonna say open in Teams as a default. That means if I click this open, it opens the PowerPoint right inside of Teams. I'll close this. Let's say I wanna change the default though. Let's say I hit the three dot menu and I say open in. Now there's this change default. If I click that, I can choose desktop app or browser. So in my case, I want PowerPoint to open in the desktop app when I launch it from Teams. So I'm gonna set that, hit save. Now when I click this, it's gonna open up PowerPoint in the desktop. And there we go, let's close this. You can also change the global default in settings. So in the upper right, I will hit the three dot menu, go to settings. Now scroll down on the general tab to the bottom and you'll see files and always open Word, PowerPoint and Excel files in and again, I've got my choices. Maybe in this case, I'll choose it to the browser. I'll always open Word, Excel, PowerPoint through the browser. The sixth new feature is live caption languages added for Teams meetings. I'm gonna to go to the three dot menu here and I'm gonna turn on live captions. You can see along the bottom that live captions are coming in English. This has been something that's been supported for a little while. The new update is now I can change languages for the entire group. So what that means is, let's say I go down to the three dot menu in the lower right, I click this and say change spoken language. Let's say I'm in a meeting and everyone is speaking Norwegian. This is gonna change live captions for everyone. So to be really clear, when you change this, it changes live captions for everyone in that meeting. So it's not each person chooses their own, it is changing it for everyone. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna choose Norwegian and when I click confirm, I'll speak in a little bit of Norwegian that I know, and that it's going to change along the bottom. So this is gonna change for everyone. Jeg snakker litt norsk. Vi liker iskrem. Now at the top, notice that it says spoken language was set to Norwegian, and that bubble appears for everyone in the meeting. So if I wanna change the language to Spanish, it'll change the language for live captions to everyone who's gonna be on this call. The seventh new feature is poll intelligence when you're creating these inside of Teams meetings, and this is supported by Forms technology. First, I'll open up a Teams meeting that I've already sent out and edit it. Now we have the ability to add a Forms app, so I'm gonna click plus here, and let's choose Forms, and this has existed already. Click Save. Now it added the Polls tab here, but here's the new parts. You get suggestions automatically, poll suggestions. So I could say, how are you feeling? How energized? Or what's the status of your current task? Let's do, how are you feeling today? I'm gonna to select this one and add poll to meeting. So now I've got this poll all ready to go. I can create new ones right here. Click create new. And I have other suggestions here. So there's a whole bunch of different suggestions. Maybe I'll do, do you agree with this proposal as well? And this is similar technology that has already been shipped in Teams meetings with forms. Now you just get that automatic suggestion to speed it up and save yourself some time. So this looks pretty good. I'll click save. Now I have two different polls ready to launch in my meeting. The eighth feature is quick quizzes in Teams meetings. So just like we created before, I'm going to create new right here. And instead of a multiple choice poll, in this one, I'm gonna do multiple choice quiz. So I can do a quick quiz. This is great for education or in the enterprise environment, you wanna quiz people on what you've been talking about. So I'll select this here and I can give a couple of options. And so we'll say, what is Mike's favorite app? Oh, and automatically I get some suggestions. So I'll add a couple more here. We'll add an option, you know, Sway, 
stream, forms, delve. So here are all the options about what my favorite app is. I'm only gonna allow one answer. And note, you gotta select what is the right answer. So I'm gonna say, you know, OneNote is my favorite app. That's the correct answer, but no one else knows that. Okay, let's save this. Great, and now I'm ready to launch this once I join the meeting. So let's go back into the meeting. Okay, we'll go back up and click the forms button here. Scroll down and you can see what is Mike's favorite app. Let's launch that one. All right, my favorite app. I'll choose OneNote because I know that one. And I'll hit submit. And you can see the little green check mark down here. That's the right one. But if then someone else guesses a different answer, it'll show up on the X. The ninth new feature is the addition of Immersive Reader to Teams iOS and Android mobile apps. This applies to both posts and chat. I'm in Teams Mobile. I'll switch to a message here. Tap in the upper right. Now tap Immersive Reader. It opens the inclusively designed Immersive Reader, and now I'll show Read Aloud. Algebra, general. I can change the way the page looks, and the text, and the font size, and the colors. I can even translate to another language. Algebra, Here's French. Generalité. Le lecteur immersif est des... I'll close the Immersive Reader, and now I'm going to switch over to Chat. I can do the same thing, long press on the message, choose Immersive Reader, same thing. The tenth and final new feature is a small but useful update for downloading files. I'll switch to the Files tab here. And let's say I want to download a document, this geography document. I hit the three dot menu and I choose download. Watch over on the left hand side for the little files tab and you'll see a check up here. So I'll click download and it downloads it. But now you see this little nice checkbox so you can get a visual indicator when it's done downloading. It works the same way in a chat message as well. I'll go to chat here and here's a PowerPoint deck. I'll hit the three dot menu and choose download and it's downloading. And you can see it's a little gray, and when it's done, it turns to green. If I click on Files, I go into my Files section, and I click on Downloads here, and here are the two different files that I downloaded. And it's also available in your Windows Explorer under Downloads as well, but just finding it here in Teams makes it a little bit easier. I can open the Downloads folder right here. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel, and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.